Welcome. Today is Wednesday. It's January the 28th and also the feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas. So we want to pray for all the Dominicans um, who are throughout our country. And also today we remember um, Bishop Garcia, who is the Bishop of the Diocese of Monterey, because the, today is the anniversary of his ordination as a bishop. So um, we want to look, first of all, at our St. Thomas Aquinas, priest and doctor of the church. This great Dominican teacher lived only 49 years. He lived from 1225 to 1274, but he traveled much. And from his birthplace as, at Aquina in uh, central Italy to Cologne, uh, to Paris, to Rome, and to the monastery near Naples where he died. He wrote much. His two uh, summas should not be obscured. His other writings are having to do with biblical and theological and philosophical writings. Thomas prayed much and dedicated his brilliant talent to investigating the sublime truth of God in the light of faith and also human intellect. On this day, his body was transferred to the Dominican monastery in Toulouse. He was canonized in 1323. He is the patron of Catholic schools, and it's nice to have him during this week because this week is also Catholic Schools Week and is titled The Angelic Doctor. So we remember Thomas Aquinas today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. God our Father, you made Thomas Aquinas known for his holiness and learning. Help us to grow in wisdom by his teaching and in holiness by imitating his faith. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we're looking at the Gospel of Mark, it's chapter 4, verses 1 to 20. And this chapter 4 of Mark is devoted to parables, stories from Palestinian daily life to teach a spiritual lesson. This is the famous parable of the sower. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the sea. A very large crowd gathered around him, so that he got into a boat on the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on land, and he taught them at length in parables. And in the course of his instruction, he said to them, Hear this. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. It came up and grew, and yielded thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. He added, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present along with the twelve questioned him about the parables. He answered them, The mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to those outside everything comes in parables, so that they may look and see, but not perceive, and hear and listen, but not understand, in order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear, Satan comes at once and takes away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, who, when they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no roots. They last only for a time. Then when tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are the people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. 
But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord presents a parable which is esteemed very much by the early church. The parable of the sower explains why his own did not accept him and describes various responses to the gospel met by the early church, the early Christians. The shallow mind and the hard heart, the easy diverted and the morally weak. And so none of us is naturally able to give initially a total response to the gospel's call. There are pockets of um, resistance in our minds and emotions and also habits. So these are not necessarily areas of sin, but are guarded maturity. So by faith, we can slowly begin to draw down the power and also the light of Jesus into the most re, re, um, re, recalcitrant, let's say, area of our lives. So this is one great challenge of discipleship, um, to give our faith concrete expression and to our professional and sexual and economic and leisure activities. Faith is so important. And these, uh, we must realize, are being called, all of us, to a reality of living out the gospel message every day. And sometimes that can be hard because of what we face in our society. Mm -hmm. All these people around us who are not living out the gospel message are living out another message. And sometimes they, they just lose um, connection with the scriptures in their lives. And they go a whole other way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. do you see it, um, you know, in people that are around you? You know, I do. And I think oftentimes um, we have to discern what's voices that we're listening to. You know, I think it was T.S. Eliot that said that there are three voices, the voice of the world, the voice of God, or the voices of ourselves. And so it's which voice are we listening to? But this gospel tells us that the word of God is sown out so generously. It's given so generously. And I'm wondering... You know, are we also partaking in that generosity of also being people who share the Word of God with others? And, and then again, whose voice are we listening to? And oftentimes, too, it's like um, when the seed is part of all of our lives, mm -hmm. we, we have to realize this, that it has to be open enough so that God's grace can fill us and enliven that seed to grow in us. Mm -hmm. So if there's closure right. or if there's the inability to recognize God's Word in our life, then that seed cannot grow and cannot mature in each of us. Exactly. And which voice are we paying the most attention to, to? You know, is it the the voice of God calling us, giving us always His love and His mercy, or are we listening to the voice of the world? And sometimes I think that uh, listening to God's voice can be more problemsome when um, troubles come our way, mm -hmm. and then we tend to think, "Well, where's God yes. in all of this?" And so we go through a whole process um, sometimes of separating, separating ourselves from Him mm -hmm. and um, not realizing that he's there in the good times, the bad times, and the difficult times. He's Absolutely. always there, we, but we have to search for him. We have to search, and we have to listen. Yes. So, so if we don't search for him, and we don't allow ourselves to be open to receive God's grace to nurture that seed that's been planted in us, mm -hmm. then we really uh, can't really call ourselves Christian, I don't think. Yeah. Because what we're doing is we're living what we say is the Christian life, but at the same time, we are choosing to live it our own way mm -hmm. versus God's way. Yes. Come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm.